beautiful. Yeah, the message uh, I, I want to share with, sorry for that, there was a hitch this side, that uh, God is different. God is different. We hear a lot about God, my friends. We speak a lot about God and we sing a lot about God. And sometimes we almost think that we know him very well. Sometimes we pray as if God is like us. We think that maybe God will be moved by our language like we are moved by language. Maybe we think that because we are moved by praise, God will be moved by praise. Maybe we think that when we are moved by tears of others, God will be moved by our tears. Sometimes we think that repeated pleas, but I just came to tell you, friends, that God is different. Sometimes we speak about God like he's one of us. We think of judgment and Christian life as an attempt to please God through struggles and sufferings. I have news for you today that we need to think of God as being different. He is different from the best people that we know. He is different from the fairest people we know. He is different from the most caring and loving people we know. God is different. When Jesus came to show us who God is, and until when he was living, ascending to heaven, those closest to him didn't understand him because he was different from what they expected. That's why when you read John chapter 14, verse 8 to 9, Philip says, Lord, show us the Father. And Jesus says, don't you know me? Because Jesus had been trying to show who God is, but the human expectation of who God is and who actually God is, uh, were not matching with Philip. And Philip needed to know that God is different from what he expected. When Peter cut off someone's ear to defend Jesus during the arrest of Jesus, Jesus restored the ear to the man who was among those who came to bring him suffering. Do you know why? Because God is different. When you read Acts chapter 1, verse 6, you come across the disciples just before Jesus lifts up to heaven. After having stayed with them, he has died, he has resurrected, and they ask him, Lord, is it time to restore your kingdom? Because their continuous understanding of how God functions and how God does things was different from the reality of who God is. Up to the time Jesus was living, they thought that Jesus is still a military leader, a political leader who is going to manage things in a certain way. I just came to tell you, friends, that God is different. So that we don't make the same mistake that Philip and the disciples made to think that God operates and does things like us. Actually, the Bible says, and this is the text I want us to consider today in Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27, that I am the Lord, the God of all mankind, of all flesh, is anything too hard for me. You see, friends, when you look across life, things can be hard for human beings. But when we come to prayer, we should not come with the perception of human beings that things that are hard for human beings will be hard for God. Things can be hard for leaders, even seasoned leaders, but it cannot be hard for God. Things can be hard for politicians who have always been diplomatic and cracked the most difficult issues but it cannot be difficult for God. That's why God says, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind, the God of all flesh is anything too hard for me. We need to approach prayer knowing that the God we are praying to is different from father, is different from mother, is different from anyone who we think would be helpful to us. Things can be hard for medical ex experts. 
You can visit doctors, they give you injections and tablets and you feel no better. And you start panicking that maybe you are suffering from something more serious that has not been identified. And in your panic, you may think that God is also having the same challenge that your, your doctors and medical experts are having. I just came to tell you that God is different. God is different. He cannot be compared to the challenges and limitations of your medical experts. Things can be hard for security experts. They may not investigate, they may not deter, but that cannot be the same with God. It can be hard for experienced old people. It can be hard for economists. It can be hard for engineers. It can be hard for rich people and poor people alike. It can be hard for professors in academia and even for the uneducated. But I just came to tell you today that for God, it is different. Why? For nothing is impossible with God. That understanding should draw us to prayer more than anything else. Just knowing that I may have visited offices yesterday and I didn't get what I wanted. I was not treated the way I should be treated. And I see darkness ahead of me. But when you come to prayer, you must wake up to the reality that God is different. No one can stop God. No one can defy God. And God will have his way when he, purpose, he purposes to have his way. God is different. And so when we approach the prayer moment like now, we must be conscious that we are approaching a different God. There must be more confidence now than has ever been because God is different. We are not coming to try our luck when we come to pray. We are coming to approach the monarch of the universe who is able at his word to create the entire universe. And his will is the best for us. God is different. That understanding changes my life when I come to prayer. When I come to prayer, I'm not coming to address an expert who may be facing this issue for the first time and needs to figure out I'm approaching God for whom nothing is impossible. You see, the Bible says in Psalm 27 verse 10 that though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Do you know why? Because God is different. I mean, even human beings can reject their own children, but God is different. Actually, you need to familiarize yourself with Isaiah 49 verse 15, where it says, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion for on the child she has born? And it says, though she may forget, I will not forget you, says God. Why? Because God is different. A mother can abandon a child, and we have seen it happening. There are mothers who give birth to children, and for some reason they didn't want the child or they don't like the father. They put the child beside the road and walk away never to turn back. But God says, even though a mother and a child who should be having such a strong bond can part, I, God, am different. I just came to tell you, friends, that God is different. And that's why he says again in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, that I, the Lord, do not change. So you descendants of Jacob are not destroyed. I want to thank God today that he is different. And I want to pray that he helps me to be faithful to him who is different from everything and everyone around me. That when I come to prayer, I have come to a different moment. Because I'm dealing with a different God who has no limitation and who is able and who will do it. God is different. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being different from our doctors, different from our older brothers and sisters and relatives and friends. Thank you for being different, that you cannot betray us the way we have been betrayed by friends and people we trusted. Thank you for being different, that we can trust you even when we mess up, that you can still forgive and embrace us. You are so different that when the prodigal son came back home, you received him when nobody, including the prodigal son, expected to be received back. May this always give us confidence when we come to prayer that you are different and you are good. 
In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.